Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Noelle Nelson. I'm one of the other Global Health Fellows here at Rice 360. Um, today, I'm presenting about our benchtop testing of our neonatal video-based respiratory rate monitor. So as I'm sure many of you know, respiratory rate is a very important vital signs for newborns, especially when their lungs are underdeveloped. So respiratory rate monitoring can help identify respiratory complications and manage care. For example, if the respiratory rate is above 60 breaths per minute, this can indicate respiratory distress syndrome, which is a leading cause of mortality in newborns. This can be managed with oxygen therapy or CPAP, which is also guided in part by respiratory monitoring. Alternatively, if a baby stops breathing for more than 20 seconds, this indicates an apnea of prematurity, which affects 50% of all newborns. This can also be treated very easily with tactile stimulation or caffeine pills, but the key is it has to be detected in order to be treated. So currently, there are no tools on the market that meet UNICEF and Nest, Nest 360's target product profile for respiratory rate monitors. Ideally, a device would be continuous, cost less than $250, operate on battery for at least six hours, be completely reusable, and of course, accurate. So in high resource settings, the standard of care is a multi-parameter patient monitor. However, these are very expensive, require constant wall power, and have consumable components. When patient monitors aren't available, the WHO recommends manual counting. This is obviously not continuous, um, and it's not always accurate either, as well as also just placing, placing a large burden on nurses with already low nurse-to-patient ratios. So there are new tools that are need to be developed um, to meet the needs of nurses and patients. So we're developing a video-based method to monitor respiratory rate. Right now, this is a very early stage prototype that just consists of a camera and then a video processing algorithm. We've been testing this on our breathing baby model, which was actually developed by a team of undergrads here at Rice. So how does this work? So right now, you just input the video, and then we use signal processing methods to select pixels that contain respiratory information. We then combine these pixels to create a respiratory signal, and then we can count breaths and calculate a respiratory rate from there. So I want to take a minute to talk about why specifically a video-based monitor. So some of the main benefits is that there's no cords on the patient this way. So that provides easy access for both caregivers and mothers. However, there are some unique design challenges that arise with this, such as ambient lighting and where are you going to place this camera in a NICU. So this testing, we really wanted to look at these specific challenges to see whether or not this could feasibly be integrated into a NICU. So in order to test this, we use our breathing baby model. And here in the video, you can see um, the internal mechanism. We just place a rubber baby doll on top of this. Um, so we can set it at a set respiratory rate. We use 50 breaths per minute. We then manually tune the camera settings to make sure that we can at least see um, the respirations. And then we record it the model breathing for two minutes, and then we process the video after data collection in this case. So we tested four different lighting conditions that we thought commonly arise in the NICU. Um, normal lighting, phototherapy, which as we all know is a common treatment for jaundice. Um, low lighting, and then we also added reflective stickers in the low lighting scenario to see if we could take advantage of whatever light does exist. We also tested four different camera placements, and these were meant to mimic if you were mounting the camera on the side of the bassinet in the NICU. We did by the side, by the feet, and then the top corner and the bottom corner. So here's an example of what this looks like. So on the right, you can see, um, sorry, the left, you can see the raw video, and if you look closely, you can see the little breaths. On the right side, you can see in red the pixels that the algorithm selected, and then on the bottom is the respiratory signal that these pixels were combined to create. As you can see, you can see very clear peaks, um, which are the breaths, um, and it was really encouraging to see this given that the breathing was so subtle. Okay, so out of these conditions, what worked? So the lighting, we were pretty successful. Um, normal lighting, phototherapy, and the low lighting with reflective stickers all worked great. Um, it did not work at all without the reflective stickers, but the stickers really helped to amplify the signal. Um, for the camera placement, only the side view consistently worked. We were able to capture some breaths in the other views, but not consistently. But we are looking into other methods um, so that we can provide more flexibility with mounting options. 
So obviously this is a very promising but early stage prototype and there's lots of ongoing work. One of the things we're looking into is implementing real time processing because right now everything is done retrospectively. We also need to develop a form factor. Right now it's just a camera and an algorithm. So we need to be able to package that in a device that can be easily used and distributed. Um, and also we need to assess clinical accuracy. Our breathing model is great, um, but newborns obviously don't breathe at a nice, steady, consistent 50 breaths per minute. So we need to make sure um, that's accurate in these scenarios as well. Um, and that's all I have. Um, thank you so much for your attention, and I'm happy to um, answer any questions or hear any suggestions. Hi, great presentation. Um, I'm Rose from MIT. I was wondering, do your reflective stickers, do they have to have anatomical specificity or they can kind of go anywhere and you can still track um, the respiratory rate? Ideally, it would be where the most chest movement is and that's where they can kind of be the most valuable. Um, but the ones in this video were actually not placed in the best and it still worked because um, they really, um, what we're looking for in the video is a lot of high contrast and be able to see the movement with that high contrast. So as long as they're placed somewhere that's moving in time with the respirations, we can capture that. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you for a nice presentation. I was going to ask you, does the baby have to be uh, naked? Um, so no, not necessarily. Um, we haven't done a lot of testing with um, swallows or anything like that. But as I was mentioning, what really matters is that we can see contrast. So there's some devices that um, look at similar things and they actually recommend putting something that's patterned on the baby's chest because then you can track those shapes. Um, so I think as long as it's not super baggy and that it moves along with a baby's respirations, it would still work. Um, I, I'm sure some folks in this room will remember this, but um, a few years back, the CHARM device was an attempt to do respiratory rate measurement based on movement. Um, but the way that Philips tried to validate it was through a camera-based mm -hmm. device that recorded respiratory rate counting. Um, but one of the challenges they had, and I know Noah might still be here, but Christopher from UNICEF uses this as, as an example of an innovation that didn't go to scale because it was very challenging to get uptake of a device that only did respiratory rate. Mm. And so that's just the one thing I'm thinking about as you do it. There is something nice about doing it with an image because there's probably some other things you could integrate. Um, but just thinking about the product landscape, I would... Yep. Talk to the charm folks um, mm -hmm. about it as well. That's definitely a great point. Um, I know I'm only focused on respiratory rate at the moment, but I will say that there is literature out there of other people working on other vital signs with respiratory or with video-based monitoring. People are looking at heart rate, um, SpO2, and I think even blood pressure. But it's still all all fairly new. Last question. Uh, thank you very much. A really <laughs> really interesting presentation. And respiratory rate is really really important and is notoriously not done. <laughs> or done badly. Um, the, my, my one comment would be, as you move forwards with your design um, process, there are some countries who are quite sensitive about cameras. Yes. And so they certainly, I've had experience myself within Malawi where I was doing a multimedia education project and I got accused of taking the soul of the baby mm. into the camera. So however you design it, I would advise that it looks as least like a camera as possible <laughs> so they don't think that their baby is being filmed because sensitive from a sensitivity point of view lots of people have had photos taken over the years and sold and people have made yeah. money there's lots and lots of stories associated with it um and i also do second the fact that you know we're focusing on multiple vital signs separately mm -hmm. and actually as an end user that's that's quite hard if you've got all of the if we go to the Absolutely. simulations which we did um it's too many things attached to a baby, mm -hmm. but I, I commend you for what you're doing because I think it's really important. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, the privacy thing is definitely something that we are considering. Um, we want, we will, um, we're planning on avoiding showing any actual image um, from the camera um, and just using the data internally. So hopefully that will help.